I'll be reacting to The World Ends With You, the animation episode 5. I'll be watching it from Funimation's website, and I'll be starting my reaction in... One, zero, go. Oh, we're on Pumped Up for this. Ding, ding. I always love looking at the Kawi itself animation logo. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking with B, they offered him an opportunity to revive a Ryan if he's serving under the Reapers. Because I don't think B would be operating if it was just for his own life to be spared. It feels like... I'm not going to blame Neku for moping around. What else, man? I agree, this isn't a situation to be smiling at. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about a lackadaisical approach there. No, I see that was rough seeing that. No, no, he can't consider that. It wasn't. It wasn't him that brought Shiki there. It was just shitty circumstances and her dying that brought her there. I don't think Neku could ship on himself one bit, but I could see why he would though. Yeah, where'd he go? <laughs> Should he be so mildly though? I mean, no, there has to be more to him than just meets the eye because most people would be thinking, oh man, I got a whole ass to make sure that I don't get erased. But this handsome dude's like, mm, I'm gonna just be the calm, kill cucumber. And I'm like, okay. He's shifty. My guess is maybe he actually is, um... Hmm. Maybe that man could be... I'm thinking. Because obviously it can't be another Neku because Neku's entry fee when he went inside there was... It was his memory, so it definitely can't be that. Since, um, yeah, since Neko's appearance wouldn't look that way. My guess is, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it could be the person that manipulated Neko's death for all we know. Or who knows? Yeah, I mean, that was like that shifty smile in the opening, too. I don't think they'd be putting that there for, like, no reason. You know, this opening, man, I fucking love it. I just wish it was full version, though, because I tried looking it up on YouTube and I couldn't find it, though, unfortunately. All right, now it's back. Well, yeah, as long as he's still there, they must be fine. I don't think Neko should be saying that concern he's getting tired out right now. Okay, that's really damn fishy there. That was too fucking convenient. This dude! <laughs> what a dick. Yeah, it's finally nice to see someone that they can talk to, at the very least. Uh, it's the polar opposite. 
Aww. He can't really call it his own fault, though, because for all he knew, if he wanted to play the game, he would have completely dissipated by all the implications that it just seemed like Shiki was going to come back to life, so I'm not going to blame Neku. Hmm. Oh. Alrighty. He remembers. Just by his facial expression, he remembers. Just doesn't feel like telling Neku everything, though. Hmm. How in the hell can this be fun? But, I mean, I guess the man might be a sociopath, and that's why he perceives it as fun. What the- who would volunteer for this? Wow. People want to escape the game, but this motherfucker went in there! What? Wow. Oh man, that's just absolutely absurd. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. You know, I have a feeling that if. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> hey, might as well go for the full course. Aww. I would have taken the donut offer. Hopefully it's beneficial. And a coma. Yeah, and I feel like I was gonna say that. I wouldn't blame Michael for being suspicious, though. Hmm. That explains a lot, then. Oh yeah, even the supreme talented make mistakes sometimes. But even a little bit of work would be better than nothing, though. Maybe for the next mission? Yeah, but their life are in it's constantly in danger though. Their lives. It'd be pretty hard to room. Mm. Right, it's nice to see him smiling about something at the very least. Aww. Huh. And it has to be with the way um, Neku's talking about it. Oh! Title of the anime! I mean, ain't wrong with that. Because the more people you know, the more things you do, the much more fuller of an individual you become. I mean, that's part of life. 
Not much you can do if inconveniences do occur. It probably will show up soon, though. That's going to be my guess. And it'll be something that's going to be probably difficult. Huh. So maybe he's trying to get an upper hand on some of the missions, and that's why he's looking for high-energy signatures? Yeah, that don't look good. Guess it's like something's gonna explode at any moment with the music, with like the. Da -na -na -na. Then that's essentially... What the fuck? Okay then. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that goes on the money there. That's me wonder if the composer's the one that could have manipulated Neku's death and everyone else that's inside the game. Hmm. Oh, the way he says it is creepy as hell though. Wait, did it? So, wait, they went a full day without a single mission? Okay, talk about that being a twist there. I mean, yeah, at least now we're seeing a bit of character development for Neko. At least now he's trying to expand his horizons a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, might as well go for it. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. How if there wasn't even any mission directly given out, though? Unless me and Amito is killing some of the players out of just sheer boredom. Or could it just be the players killing each other? That means if there's no missions for two, eight, two days, that means the next episode, whatever mission's gonna be, it's gonna be hardcore as hell than going by all the implications. It's no issue, but I think eventually it'll become one if it's isn't tackled on pretty soon, though. You know, maybe an excitement fix? No, it's probably going to be more to it than just that. Oh. 
Oh, it's finally nice to see that they're showing him off again. It's been a while. I just love his bravery and wanting to speak with our Reaper and deal with them. <laughs> Without even asking Neko for a single bit of permission. Talk about it. Pretty dang um badass negotiator there. He doesn't seem like a mission though. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> I mean, no, she looks like she was about to be attacked, though. I mean, I'm assuming now she'll be able to now that she's got her guard up. It just cries up that but it was a, it was a fucking ant. Whoa! Hmm. I mean, that's a good theory. <laughs> you know me both of it's a fucking dick, I love it though. Uh, I don't, I mean, oh, okay, I guy is reasonable at the very least. Shit, is like the sort of MVP this week. I mean, hey, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I don't think, uh... Oh, that's a cute... Oh, okay, those are cute little names. I don't think Neko and Josh are going to be the ones to step away from a challenge, though. Does Joshua have to say that? Oh boy, they're going to be in for a shocker. <laughs> oh no. That's just gonna cause mass pandemonium panic among the players though that are left. Joshua did this on purpose. He just wants to see shit burn. Or maybe not. I mean maybe he had another purpose for doing that. And just too paranoid regarding them. I mean, shit, it might be above their pay. Yeah, but the little ones aren't going to let that happen that easily. Yeah! That's exactly... Yo, Joshua, I thought the same thing I was thinking. All right. <laughs> oh! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I do like that. At least you're seeing some chemistry building up between Joshua and Neko when it comes to Neko being a little bit worried for Joshua there. And I love how he riles Neko on. No, that's sweet. Hmm.
Well, yeah, I mean, range attacks don't seem to be doing much effect, just a small amount of effect. Hey, you know, that could be a nice opportunity for Necron Joshua just seeing what a Reaper's joint attack actually looks like. I mean, hey. I love that! Confident smiles from both our boys! And I was hoping they'd see, we would see the joint attack of the Reapers, but I guess they're saving that for a narrative purpose later on. Oh, oh, but I'm assuming it's going to end right when we get a big revelation, though, because... <laughs> That's my gut feeling. Oh, it's nice. Hmm. What is he contemplating scanning Joshua again? And that's why he's sweating? So they knew each other then. I don't think he'd be saying that for no reason. I mean, that's my gut feeling. If there's a chance, maybe Joshua knew Neku, and maybe even manipulated Neku's death. Oh shit! I was actually right then. And Joshua manipulating, but why though? Why would he do that? Oh, wow. What a motherfucker! The thing is, though, he needs to rely on Joshua to survive. As shitty as that sounds! He needs the motherfucker to survive. Fuck! <laughs> now I gotta wait a week! But, you know, even though, yes, the twist, I saw it coming ever since they first introduced Joshua because I was like, this guy's shifty. I wouldn't be surprised if he caused Neku's death. Even though, yes, the twist I saw coming, and no, I don't play the game. It was just a lot too many things that just pointed to Joshua being the one that was the orchestrator because we seemed super confident. And then when Neku did scan him, we got all that creepy stuff. Even though that's the case, I loved it because they executed the twist really well. Because the one scene at Neku's frightened face was pretty darn alarming because we usually see him confident, but now just seeing the fact that the person that he has to trust, being the one that backstab him in actual real life, I'm like, yo! It makes him feel bad for a boy. And that's what I love about this episode. It makes you feel sympathy for Neku. The twist was amazing regardless because even if I saw it coming, they foreshadowed it pretty damn well, so it doesn't feel like an asshole. It feels like something the writers have been building up towards for at least a good amount of episodes, and that's why I love the episode a lot. Turf. And plus, aside from the twist of being, at least in my personal opinion, a good one because I found it to be pretty darn interesting if you ask me, I love how this episode, it really does a good job of like go wrecking my emotions because I was like, oh, Joshua and Neku, they're helping each other. And then this episode's like a figurative slap in the face in a good way. And then it's revealed that Joshua's the one that ended Neku's life. But I was like, yo, that is fucking crazy. And aside from that, Another thing I do like to see is that even Reapers can be threatened by some of the noise. I thought that was absolutely... I thought that was absolutely intense, if you ask me. And yeah, that's why I thought the episode it hit off on all the right notes. 
Because in seeing the Reapers get threatened, that was a surprise. And on top of having that surprise factor in the episode, something else that also really dug about it, I dug the fact that when it comes to all of this, we even get to see how in this episode, we just see how Hanakawa's been doing because when they showed him, I thought he was pretty damn cool to, so to finally get to see him again in the flesh was at least a visual treat for me. And that's what I also like too, that this series ain't just going to introduce characters and just completely forget about their entire existence. It's going to actually give him at least a bit more depth on occasions. And it was nice to see him do a solid for both and Neku and Joshua and actually enhancing their phones. I thought that was pretty damn badass. And that's what I thought the episode hit all the right notes narratively because it was just constantly doing something monumentous in almost every single moment. And I gotta give utter respect for that. Now, aside from that, there were a lot of other things that I loved too about this episode. Animation quality was great. Great music, great writing, great voice performances, and that's why I thought the episode was 9 out of 10 worthy. I absolutely adored it. I mean, shit. The series just keeps on getting better. But anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below.